If you like cheap cars that look insanely good, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna talk through 10 cars that I think look insanely good for under 10,000 pounds. And if you wanna see the same video again at under 5,000 pounds instead, then just hit the like button, a thousand likes and I'll make that video. And if you're one of the 77% of people that aren't subscribed, then do hit subscribe before we get into it. <laughs> Let's kick this video off with a pretty rare car. We're just 208 registered on the roads in the UK now. The Smart Brabus Roadster, a tiny car with a tiny engine, but some super cool looks to go with that size. That engine is a 0.7 litre turbocharged in 9.3, which makes 101 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 9.5 seconds, and the whole car weighs just over 800 kilograms in coupe spec. With Smart falling under the Mercedes umbrella and Brabus being arguably the most well known Mercedes tuning house outside of AMG, it was a nice amalgam of Mercedes related brands to pull this together. Brabus mostly made their mark aesthetically with those lovely alloys and slightly more aggressive overall look, but it runs deeper with the stiffer ride, more power, and tuning to the automatic gearbox to try to make it a little bit less sluggish. These start at around £4,000 and 10k will get you a 2006 model with 80,000 miles on the clock. The main complaints about it come from rust in places that make you question the build quality and the missed opportunity to make something truly special thanks to that trash gearbox. Next up we have the newest car on the list, the Alfa Romeo Giulia. I recently drove the Giulia Quadrifoglio and what's cool about these less aggressive examples is that the original car was the quad, so every other car is effectively a detune of that beast. What it retains though is its absolutely stunning looks. For our money, we'll be getting a 2.2 litre turbo diesel inline four block, which makes 147 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.9 seconds. Not fast, but definitely still lovely looking. It competes with the BMW 3 Series and Mercedes S Class, and having been in one, they are actually much nicer than you would expect inside. They're maybe not as shouty as a Merc inside or as solid as a BMW. W, but they are minimalist and sporty in the right ways. It helps they're also proven to be pretty good on reliability when looked after, with one hitting over 400,000 kilometers on the continent, and it was designed by the same man that penned the 4C. These start at around our 10k limit, but you will get a 2017 model with 80,000 miles on the clock for that kind of money. The most iconic shape on this list belongs to the Jaguar XJS, a lovely classic Jag that gets ever more classic by the day, with prices of the best examples getting pretty aggressive. These came with multiple engine options, including a 60 the V12 which makes 306 brake horsepower, taking this classic barge to 60 in 7.8 seconds, though of course as a luxury Grand Tourer, the focus is less on speed and more on waftiness. These were originally designed by the same man that designed the E-Type Jag, which this car succeeded, and the facelift was designed by the same man that designed the XJ220, so however you look at it, you've got some pretty good penmen putting this together. They ran from 1975 all the way to 1996 across multiple owners of the Jaguar brand, and they were actually the predecessor to the XK8, meaning they're a loose ancestor to the F-Type. Five grand is around the lowest you'll find these listed for, and double that gets you a 1995 model with 90,000 miles on the clock. Reliability-wise, they're not too bad, but the wiring looms are a known issue, as well as rust issues too. This might be the roguest choice on the list, but the Abarth Punto Evo is, in my opinion, the best-looking Abarth warm hatch you can get into, and one of the best-looking hatches for the price, despite the lack of real interest from the market on release. It shares its engine basically with the more recent Abarth 595s, a 1.4 litre turbo Turbocharged in 94 block, 362 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.6 seconds. It's no surprise that these are so good looking as they were penned by Giorgetto Giugiaro at Itel Design, the company he co founded. He's been responsible for some of the most beautiful cars of all time, like some of the Ferrari 250s, the Lancia Delta, and the BMW M1 and beyond. The Punto Eva was the facelift to the Grande Punto, and the Abarth was the aggressive version, which actually sets a lot of the standard for the Abarth we see on the roads today, just rare and I would say cooler. These start at around £4,000 and Tenka gets you into a 2011 model with 90k on the clock. Gearboxes appear to offer the main problems alongside finish or build quality. We're onto a bit of a hybrid between a hatch and a coupe, the Volvo C30 in our design spec, ideally with the T5 powertrain which means you'll get yourself into a 2.5 litre turbocharged inline 5 block, producing 226 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.5 seconds. It's got a very different design language to most other cars on the road, helping it to stand out, and in our design it gets a bunch of extra flurry bits to help it look even more aggressive. It wasn't designed by someone super well known, but instead by a man who has gone on to be one of the design heads at Lincoln Co, who do make some incredibly cool looking cars, particularly their touring cars. I think that's testament to the C30, which also had serious performance inspiration to its design, given some concepts of the car were shown at SEMA originally with some insane 
amazing features like the double nitrous tanks. It's the cheapest car on the list by far, starting at £2,000 and you don't need to spend 10k to get yourself into a 2012 model with around 40,000 miles on it and it's a well proven powertrain too in terms of reliability. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video, if you are then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new and let me know in the comments down below what do you think is the best looking car that you can buy for under 10 grand, I'd love to hear your thoughts. On to a cult classic now, the Honda S2000 which is a rarer, quicker and probably equally cult followed version of one key competitor, the Mazda MX-5. It arrived in 1999 and ran through 2009 with an update in 2004 and both versions are available within our 10k price range. These come with a 2 litre inline 4 engine with VTEC helping them to make 240 brake horsepower taking them to 60 in 6 seconds. It was designed by the same man involved in cars like the Integra Type R and NSXR, the latter of which meant he built a close relationship with Ayrton Senna before his accident. It gets a 6 speed manual transmission and a Torsen LSD with close gear ratios to make it a fun driving experience. Some have argued that it's not worth the extra money over an MX-5 but I think if like me you like the cult classic looks of them they're worth it. They start at around £7,500 and 10k will get you into a 2003 model with 100k on it or a later model with slightly more mileage. Gearboxes, oil consumption and hesitation from idle are three main issue themes I could find on forums. The VW Scirocco R is a great looking car and though I am a fan of the GTS the R is probably the best looking example while also certainly being the quickest. You could also possibly argue that it's more of a typical hot hatch than its Golf equivalent given it remains front wheel drive rather than heading the way of other hyper hatches with all wheel drive. It's still got the same but slightly less powerful basic 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine producing 261 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.6 seconds. It was designed by two accomplished names in the industry, Mark Lichter who designed a bunch of VW Golfs, the Audi e-tron GT and the lovely VW Arteon shooting brake and Walter De Silva who designed the Veyron Concept, Audi R8 and second gen Audi TT. This Scirocco harks back to older generations but sets itself apart from anything else modern. It really is a lovely coupe style hatch with incredible performance focused features throughout. The starter around £8,000 and Tenka gets you a 2011 model with 90,000 miles on the clock. DSG issues are known if they haven't been looked after though so maybe go manual. The Audi S5 coupe is another Walter de Silva design and easily has one of the most beautiful shapes in modern cars yet strangely I don't think it looks good as a convertible or five door sportback. It was just made to be a coupe which is why the A5 won multiple design awards for just how pretty it is. The first generation had a pre and post major facelift which included a change in engine from a nice 4.2 litre V8 to a 3 litre supercharged V6 block which puts out 328 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.2 seconds. With the facelift and new engine it went from being named the B8 to the B8.5 and though it retained a very similar shape it got the new Audi design language around the grille and some more modern features to up the experience. It's also a more efficient car all in the pre facelift and the engine has proven to be pretty reliable all in. These post facelift models start at around 7k and you'll get a 2012 model with 100k on it for our 10k price limit. Next up we have a car from an iconic dynasty of fast Nissans, the 370Z, which was actually inspired by the profile of Sharks as a designer was enjoying watching Shark Week when he drew it. It comes with a 3.7 litre V6 engine that makes 326 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.1 seconds. It followed on from the 350Z and though there are some aesthetic similarities, it's its own beast, with I would say some quite timeless design features that help it to stand out from most other cars on the roads. I honestly reckon alongside its predecessors one day it will be heralded as a classic although it's hard to tell to what extent. And though it does look good as standard, I think it really is a car that lends itself to aesthetic modifications. I've seen people go wild, but honestly, just a few small mods do wonders on these. £6,000 will get you into one, and Tenka gets you a 2009 model with around 90,000 miles on the clock. Forums speak mostly about clutch failures and oil consumption, but many owners have had pretty good ownership experiences. Taking the top spot with its Ferrari powertrain is this, the Maserati Coupe, otherwise known as the 4200, which actually refers to the engine, a 4.2 litre V8 block which makes 390 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.8 seconds, pretty quick for one of the older cars on this list. It's another Giorgetto Giugiaro design and another Gran Tora which was the predecessor to the more stunning Gran Turismo. The 4200 comes with both a coupe and spider but the coupe in particular looks stunning with lovely flowing lines, the Echo 1990s supercar design and the boxier rear end that almost harks back to the 80s. It's basically not a very 2000s looking car but like the 370Z that kind of makes it a bit timeless. The interior does look a bit dated now though in comparison and these have been questioned for their build quality and expensive repair bills over the years, often caused by electrics, so something to look out for if you're in the market for one. These start at around £6,000 and 10k is enough for a 2004 model with 60,000 miles on the clock. And so there you have it, 10 great looking cars for under 10 grand. I hope you enjoyed, do hit like and subscribe if you did. Huge thanks to you guys and the patrons for your support and if you want to see another video on some great looking cars for under 10 grand then click here.